just a beautiful Sunday, yes. beautiful day to be in the presence of the Lord. I love the Lord so much. I just love the Lord so much. He's faithful. Yes. He's good. Yes. Always. Um, everything he does is good. Yes. Even when we don't understand, it's still good. Yes. We tend to get that later after the fact when the good happens and you realize, oops, it wasn't bad, it was good. Right. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. I'd like to thank Paul and Maria and Jim and all the leadership for giving me the opportunity to speak to you. It is uh, not just, um, it's a privilege every time I'm up here to share the gospel. And it looks like this whole week or yesterday was a day of uh, reflection for most of us. I, I, I the same too, I was thinking of the, I went back to the time I got saved and I was reflecting on and what God was doing as I was preparing this message last night and um, just reflected that all those years, all those years as a child in Africa, I, I mean, everything in the 90s, I was actually at the 90s. I was in the 90s around 96 and I had finished my first, uh, my first uh, uh, degree and I knew that immediately after finishing my, my bachelor's degree, I needed to enroll to a Bible school. And in fact, a lady from church came and told me, Pauline, you need to go to a Bible school after, after this. But I took it so lightly. I knew it was a confirmation, but I never pursued Bible school in 96. Can you imagine that Lord was draw, has been drawing me since then? And I'm, I'm just walking into that which he started yes, exactly. way back then. Amen. So it's a season for restoration. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. We bless God. I acknowledge all the fellow pastors and ministers who are here, and each one of you right now, whether you like it or not, you're a minister. Praise Jesus. Yes. You're a minister. You carry the gospel. You carry power. You carry the Holy Spirit. You carry the word of God. You are just as powerful. Praise Jesus. Yes. So I acknowledge you as ministers, as members of Eastgate. I'm also honored today to have my mom, Miss Kay. She's back there. Yeah, she and my, my brother and my niece were visiting last night. My niece was heading back to Texas. And so they spent, uh, they spent the night and mom decided, I'm just coming because I need to go to church. Yeah. So mom, you're always welcome at Eastgate. It's yeah, a yeah. beautiful, wonderful church. Praise <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. Before we get started, I just uh, sense uh, and I feel as a corporate body we should pray. And we're going to pray for the nine family members, uh, for the family of the nine family members who were lost. Can you imagine going on vacation and going on a trip with your family and you lose nine of them? Mm -mm. On a beautiful summer vacation like today, most of you are vacationing and I really got the gist of American vacation this summer. Everybody's on vacation. Bill, Bill Johnson is on vacation. Randy is, is rest, he's some rest, rest something he called it. Everybody is, is vacationing. But can you imagine going on a family trip? Mm -mm. Starting breakfast happy, lunch happy, going on the waters and not coming out. Yeah. Nine of you are gone. Um, so my heart just goes out to that family. So if you could just stand and, and say a short prayer for them. Hallelujah. They will know that we are Christians when we love one another. They don't, we don't know whether they are Christians or not, but somebody is in pain right now concerning that loss and, and also those who are affected. I, I saw the news saying, oh, someone saying, grab the kids, grab the children. So uh, God has such a tender heart for children. I'm beginning to realize the importance of that. Children are very special before the Lord. Um, and and the, he just has a special heart for them. So lift up your voice independently and just pray for this family. Father, we give you praise and we magnify your name, O Lord. We thank you, Lord. The Lord God, your God who's faithful, your God who's just. Even when bad things happen, we don't understand. But Lord God, you say that we mourn, we should mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with those who rejoice. We stand corporately as an Eastgate body in the name of Jesus. And we just lift this particular family, so Lord, especially the family who lost nine, nine family members. 
We pray right now the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the comfort of your angels, oh God. Send your angels right now to comfort them, oh Father God. Jehovah Lord, we command every effect of trauma out of their lives, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, the grief process will be quick. There will not be a, a, a lingering in the name of Jesus. Father God, wherever they are gathering right now in their homes, oh God, in the churches, oh Lord, oh God, Father Lord, we just pray right now for special comfort, special comfort to them, oh Lord, and we call forth the souls of those who are not saved, those who do not know you, Lord, that Father God, they will receive the love that you have for them, and that love will draw them to salvation and infilling of the Holy Spirit. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The reason why I'm so excited about the Lord and things that I don't understand is that he has a way of confirming himself over and over and over. The message is titled, Being Sustained in the New. And every aspect of that message was confirmed by a word or two words and even a new song by Jordan today. And I had to record that because it was a confirmation to me that this is a message that needed to be released. I actually had two messages that I was contending to release uh, today, and um, I was led to settle on this one. And I have been praying about this message. I say, God, if it's yours, let the people receive it. Let it bring a change to the people. And this message has been confirmed. I mean, even specific words were mentioned um, today. So I just praise God, but more so releasing the song. So, uh, he said, in, in, in this season, God will be the light. Yes. Mm -hmm. You will understand the concept of that when I end the message, hopefully. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So in this season, Jesus will be your light. In this season, Jesus will be your strength. In this season, yes. he will be your counsel. You will understand that as I, as I share this message. I have sensed for, so strongly for a while now that we have been in a new season. And maybe... Some of you are entering a new season now. Maybe some of you have already been in this season. And I'm also realizing that when you're in a new season, there are phases or stages to the new season. It's a new season, there's stage one, there's stage two, there's stage three, stage four. So you may be at stage nine right now, about to jump into stage 10, your final phase, and you may be in your last stage, about to start another stage one yeah. of a new season. Praise God. God is just so beautiful the way he works with us. He's a, he's a God of process. So you're, you're in a process. You're constantly in a new state. You're constantly in a new season. So if you don't feel like you're in a new season, you're waiting for a definition or, or, man, or a manifestation of the new in the way you think, maybe you are there already, but you just don't know that you are. I am here to encourage you today. It is a word of encouragement. That God will sustain you in this new season. Praise Jesus. Yes. Amen. And all things are also working for your good. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. You are in a new season. God will sustain you. Number one. Number two. Everything is working for your good. Praise Jesus. Mm -hmm. Whether you know it. Whether you feel it. Whether you understand it. It's all working for the good. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. And why is that so? Romans 8.28 says that we know that all things work together for good for them that love God. So get you, you love God, that I know. Praise God. Hallelujah. And your people who have been called in the identity and the purpose of God. So the next verse, the next line says, to them who are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. We are identity people. We are kingdom people. Everybody here is, is safe in the identity. In that identity, there's a purpose. So you have been for, you've been called. The Bible says that we are predestined. Before we got saved, we were predestined. So all things are working for good for those who are predestined. One, those things, those who have been called, you, those who are walking according to the purpose of God, which we are now. That purpose is this new season. Praise Jesus. Amen. Do you understand yes. where you are? It is all working for the good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you confess that you're a born-again Christian, if you confess that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you have been called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. If you don't know your purpose yet, he will give it to you. Yes. Trust you me. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So celebrate and embrace the process you're in right now. 
Celebrate it. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Celebrate it. Enjoy it. Hey, and that is tough, guys. Enjoying the process when you don't have a clue where you're heading is very tough. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God will sustain you in the new. Praise God. I just thank God for His Holy Spirit. I just thank God the Holy Spirit is the connector. And I go back to the song that was released today. In this, in the, in this season, he's, He will be your light. Praise the Lord. In this season, He's the one who will sustain you. Amen. Isaiah 19, Isaiah 18. Uh, I, think I, have, I think it's Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. I wrote the wrong verse. Hallelujah. Remember ye not the former things, right. neither consider the old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Amen. Now it will spring forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 99. Yes. Now it will spring forth. And then she goes about and leads us to face one another and say everything that is on the floor, in the ground, ask it to resurrect, right? So now it is springing forth. Hallelujah. Amen. In this new season, the resurrection that was released is for now. Yes. In this new season. Forget the former things. Because now, yes. Oh, this is easy. Come on. Come on. I love you, Jesus. Thank you. When the Lord goes before you and ashes his word, yes. I believe right now what I'm doing is literally encouraging you. Yes. I don't have to preach the entire sermon for you to understand that it's a new season and whatever that you need to be in, you are in already. The process has already started. Right. And now it is springing forth. Hallelujah. Yes. And the Lord will sustain you in that season. Praise the Lord. Yes. Because in this new season, what did Jordan release? He will be the light. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord, I just thank you. This is beautiful. Oh, Jesus, thank you for making this so easy. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, my God. Listen. It is going to be well. It is well. It is well. Even when you don't understand, it is well. Maybe some of you are sensing a shifting already in the spirit and in the natural. Pretty soon schools will be open and parents, maybe you have new schedules for the kids. Maybe you have a new boss. Maybe you've gotten a new job. Personally, I have transitioned. Praise the Lord. But in this season, God is doing a new thing. The new seed may be a business idea. Maybe the dream is a business idea. Maybe it's a divine connection that needs to come forth. In this season, it is coming forth. Praise the Lord. A new season has started both physically and spiritually, mentally and emotionally. In your own family life or in your workplace, it has started. Praise the Lord. I don't know whether you sense it, but in my workplace, the entire season will be, we've had changes. The president retired, the VPs retired, the executive retired, and people are being shifted from one position to another. Literally. Everybody, all the peers that I started with at work have been promoted to other, other places in the company. The old, literally, has left. And the new as is coming forth. Come on. Mm. Yes. It has happened at Eastgate. You left your old destination. You are now in a new building. And most of you can attest that something is different since we moved here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Something is unique and different and particular and peculiar about this church since we moved. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? A new thing has already started. Praise the Lord. And it's going to be well. Yeah. It is a message of encouragement to you as a church. Yeah. In this new season, it is going to be well. Since you're called to his purpose, when we are called, we surrender to this Savior. Next time you sing, all oh, to Jesus I surrender, think mm. twice about that song. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you sing, Lord, I give it all to you, I give it all to you, think twice about that song. Oh, think about it. He takes his word very, very, very serious. Yes, yes. He does. 
I remember I'm here because of prayers that I prayed in the past. Oh, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. And out there I'm singing my heart, oh, God, use me, I give you everything. Yeah. Neither did I know the cost of the call. Come on, man. Mm. <laughs> he will hold you to your word. I was at the voice of, a, uh, of apostles two years ago, and at that time I was just fired up for Jesus. Uh, and this, uh, I met a, bro a, a brother, a pastor, and he came and talked to me, and I was like, I was just giving you, oh, I'm so up for God, blah, blah, blah. If God calls me to the nations right now, I have quit and go. I am ready. Oh, Jesus. Until the time came for me to quit. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. yeah. The time came for me to quit. Yeah. And after a Saturday, he was asking me, Colleen, are you ready to let go your Isaac? Mm, come on now. Yeah. Are you ready to let go your Isaac? Hallelujah. Mm. Are you ready to let go mm. the past? That's good. Are you ready to let go the old? The reason we hang on to the old is because, and the hindrance to moving forward is because we're used to the familiarity of the old and the comfort level of the old. Mm -hmm. We are familiar with the old. Yeah. We knew we had a church, we had a stage, we had a system of getting everything assembled. And some of the resistance of moving is because we don't know how the new is gonna look like or how it will fit into the new, praise the Lord. But the beauty of that is just, it is the Lord who's taking you there. Mm -hmm. And it's the one who will lead you there. Right. Psalm 32 verse eight says, I will instruct you and it will teach you in the way you should go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two, I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are three major conditions here. One, I will instruct you. Yeah. I will give you directions to that new place that you're in. Yeah. Mm. I will teach you how to manage that new place, that new business, that new idea, <clears throat> that change in schedule. I will teach you how to restructure your life. And then, that, my own eyes, the Lord God who created you, his own eyes is upon you. What? To cancel you. His own eyes, so the spirit of counsel, so awesome. the spirit of wisdom, Amen. the spirit of knowledge. Mm -hmm. He is there, the spirit of discernment to counsel you. I love this because you're a prophetic church. You understand my lingo very well. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, yeah. revelation, yeah. understanding. That is the eye of the Lord upon you to do what to counsel you in this new position praise the lord so my encouragement to you today is god will sustain you in this new season Amen. it is not by might it is not by education it is not by intelligence it is not by spiritual gifts it is god almighty who's going to sustain you in this new season. Yes. So whoever is in that new season, if you are ex experiencing a new season, shifts have already happened. And if you're progressing in God, if you love God, and you sing, I love you, God, and you keep singing, Lord, I surrender, I give all to you, guess what? This will be an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. The Lord showed me when I was in Africa that the new season can literally mean 30 seconds from the last thing. And 30 seconds from the last thing, you need to let go of the past, let go of the offense, and move into the 30 seconds of the new things that's right next in front of you. Right. It takes your mind, it takes your spirit, it takes your soul, it takes you to literally die. Yes. That's a word. And step into the new thing. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are in a new season, but you're not alone. God will sustain you in this new season. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. 
Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. I'll paraphrase it to make it a little bit practical. Let go the past. Don't even think about it. The problem with success is sometimes success can make you linger and, and in, in the success of the past. But God is progressively fruitful. God is progressively multiplying. Means the success of yesterday, there's another success that's coming. So if you don't even let go the success of the 30 seconds behind, you may miss an opportunity of this success that's coming. Praise Jesus. Mm -hmm. So the good and the bad, let it go. Learn from them. Embrace them. Thing. Theta, tell you, Jesus, thank, thank you, Jesus, you sustain me. <laughs> Paul says something very profound. When he thinks of what God has brought him through through the years, it brought tears to me because I was thinking of that yesterday. When I just think of the deliverances, personal deliverances that even my own mom does not know today. Now she will not know about them either. <laughs> she doesn't know. But the personal deliverance that I actually saw the hand of the Lord in person. To realize that God was delivering me and sustaining me and preserving me in a new land that I did not know. In places I did not know. Just for this moment. Amen. Part of my background is that I was abducted. My, my, my father, my stepfather kidnapped me. As a ransom. Mom had to pay back a price. So the only reason I'm here is my mom literally drove almost 2,200 miles to come and kidnap me from my stepfather. Oh my goodness. And I remember it was dusk. We were in a strange land. We had voices of people looking for us. And we came through a big river as big as the Squahana River. It was 6 p.m. dark in midnight. In Africa, there's no street light. We stood at the edge of that river. We had no way of crossing over. But there was a tree that was placed on that river. It fell across the river. And my mom and I walked on that tree to cross over. A woman was yelling behind us, no, no, don't cross that river. So many people have died. Mom and child, you're going to die. But when we stood there, literally there was a street that had just fallen. It's not a coincidence that the tree was long enough, as long as the, the width of the Sukwahana River, for us to cross over mom and child only. There is a reason and a purpose for your calling. Each one of you, you have a special calling. This calling though goes in a process of being, in, a, in stages of being processed by God. Every stage is different. Every stage is new. Embrace where you are right now. Why? Let go of the old things. Behold, I'm doing a new thing right now. And today, it is springing forth. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then the next thing. It will happen. The new thing will happen just the way God has shown you. Just the way God has spoken. Why? When he speaks, his word never returns to him void. Amen. It has to perform. Amen. That which you were sent to do. Yes. So if the seed was, you had a dream. You had a vision. It was a new CD. It was a new construction. It was a new contract. It was a new opportunity. You are getting a job. Guess what? It's going to happen. Why? The Lord has spoken. Praise the Lord. Yes. And when the Lord drops the seed, he just doesn't drop it. The Bible says that what? We drop seed by God who waters and is the one who brings the increase. Praise the Lord. Before that, what goes back to him? Guess what? There is seed. It is growing. Hallelujah. Today we release the seeds, we release the dreams, we release everything that was written in those channels. The prophecies, they were released, the dreams, 
They were released the new jobs. They were released the situations in your home. They were released today. God has already spoken concerning your life. He has a plan to bring you hope and a future. That is the seed that you have. And that seed will not fail. It must go back to him with something. Hallelujah. Yes. When the Lord created the earth, he said, be what? Be fruitful. Then do what? Multiply. Hallelujah. He did not just say be fruitful and sit down and eat the fruits. No. He said be fruitful and do what? Multiply. So whatever God has given you needs to be one, fruitful two. It has to multiply. Whatever the seed is, now that we have decreed that it has to resurrect, now that we decree that it has to grow up, now that we decree that, behold, it is coming forth, guess what? It is coming forth with fruit, and it's coming forth to multiply. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. And even if you don't know how it's going to multiply, read verse 19. If it's in a dry land right now, guess what? I'm going to send rivers of waters in the dry desert. Praise Amen. the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Out of it, I will pour up rivers of water. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Meaning there will be resources. Mm -hmm. yeah. Something. Somebody. Yeah. Somewhere. A location. A connection. Something will happen. Mm -hmm. And that thing must flourish in Jesus' yeah. name. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. And when you think there is no way, <laughs> same scripture, yes. when you think there is no way, it is true. Your worst enemy is your tongue. It's true. Yes. Yeah. There's power in your tongue. Yes. Yes. Yeah. When you step into that new place, I'm leaving this sermon word by word. I am at this sermon right now in my life. When that new thing comes, your job is not, is not to worry how it's going to manifest. Your job is not to be anxious how it's going to manifest. Your job is not to start calling and seeking counsel. But the Lord rebuked me on, on Thursday. I was so nervous it wasn't funny. I was so nervous about my transitions. Like, I need a prophet. I need a prophet right now. In fact, I text somebody. I need a prophet. I need prophetic counsel about this transition. And before I did that, I was like, you don't need to, you really don't need to text anybody about this. You don't. You don't need a prophet calling. <coughs> and the moment I said that, I decided, okay, let me browse through Elijah's and I found articles by a gentleman called Emily Andy, I forget his last name, and he spoke directly to the situation I was in, directly, specific. Mm -hmm. And the next thing the Lord tells me, after I send the text, he said, just trust and walk with me. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. trust and walk with me. So you don't need a prophetic counsel, don't go to Elijah list like you did, you don't need to call Maria or Paul, what? <laughs> Trust him yeah. and walk in him. Yeah. So faith and perseverance are connected. That's right. Faith Teach. and patience are connected. So faith means you are in this new season. You are clueless about how to go through. But you're still going to come to God, praise the Lord, worship the Lord, mm -hmm. present the case to the Lord, and wait for him to minister to you. Praise the Lord. What I'm realizing in this journey, of it, it, it gets to a point that literally, it is a faith walk, whether you like it or not. It is literally a faith walk. He gives you the new step, and you step in, and you wait. Yeah. And you wait, right. and you wait. And he tells you, the next step is step B, and you wait. And you wait, yes. and you wait, and if you are like uh, rational and, in, and, in, and intellectual and you want to see the end right now, you won't. He won't let you. No. Mm -hmm. You want to see the next 10 steps? No. He will give you step 1A. Uh -huh. And then you see at step 1A. Mm -hmm. And then he gives you step 1B. Mm -hmm. And you stay there at step 1B. 
and you think you're already at step three, no, it says go back, there's still a step one C, and you have to stay at step one C. And while you're staying there, oh, watch your attitude towards him. Yeah. Not only watch your attitude towards him, but watch your attitude towards your brothers and sisters. Watch your attitude towards your own mother. I was in this process and I needed something from mom. And I was like, I called her like, mom, I need this right now. La, 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 la. So yesterday, mom and I had a one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversation. And she's like, well, you know the way you talk to me about that issue, I didn't appreciate it. And deep inside, I'm like, okay, I hear you, but did you really, do you understand what I was going through at that time? I really wanted to like, give up my position, tell her that she doesn't know that she's hearing this for the first time. <laughs> I really wanted to let her know really what I was going through at that time. And then I went through my own pity party and well, they don't understand and I love. And then I'm like, oh God, my attitude stuck towards my mom that day. And I had to repent to her and then Lord God, I'm, I'm just sorry the way I responded to my mom. I needed something and, and uh, with me sometimes I need things yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes it's good to be in positions of authority, but you still have to humble yourself regardless of positions of authority. In my life, all my life I've been a decision maker, a, solver, a problem solver, somehow, uh, somehow being sought. And I, I just thought, it's almost like I was talking to my, to my mom the way I would deal with a work situation. Where it's straight, black and white, this is it, get it done. And I had to apologize for that. So when he's still processing you and he's still going through a faith and patient and persevere, <clears throat> there could be several steps. Yeah. Your attitude towards God is important. Your attitude towards your fellow men is important. Mm. I believe so strongly that ministry starts at home. How I speak to my mom determines how I speak to any of you here. How I treat my niece who's like six years old, determines how I relate to you here. Praise Jesus. It is my prayer every day that this Christ that you see here today doesn't change from when you see me at home, from when you see me at church, from when you see me anywhere else, that this attitude remains the same. So in this new season, there's somebody called the Holy Spirit. Get very close to him because he will put you in shape very quickly. He will correct you very quickly. And me, I can't, like he, it's a restless, like I really have to repent quickly. Because um, if I don't, then uh, it will be very miserable that week. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I'm just encouraging you, in this new season, don't try to figure God out. Two, don't try to figure out how it's going to be. <clears throat> Stay in his presence. I've never, I've never learned the importance of submitting all my ways to the Lord, just as the, the book of Proverbs says, commit your ways to the Lord and he shall establish them. I've never known the importance of that verse until this past weekend. Saturday, yesterday. Where this faith becomes com literally committing all aspects to the Lord. Yes, we have agendas, we have plans. There's nothing wrong with planning. There's nothing wrong with having a vision. There's nothing wrong with having a goal. But make sure that you submit your day to the Lord. Submit your agenda to the Lord. Submit the plans to the Lord. When you have a business contract and you have to go and see the bank, you have to go and see the county, you need some permit, you need some favor, submit it to the Lord. Submit the resume to the Lord. Submit everything that you have to the Lord. You're about to travel. You're about to go, you have a speaking and get you're about to connect with somebody. Submit that thing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the Lord do the watering. Let the Lord give you direction. It's very easy when we submit to the Lord and you get direction. I also learned the importance of the word of knowledge. See, having a word of knowledge about situation gives you revelation and it gives you forehand by the help of the Holy Spirit how to confront and how to deal with that issue. Praise the Lord. So this gives of the Holy Spirit that we all yearn for, that we all want, and we, have, we want to see them manifest. We want to see the shaking and the gold dust and everything. Ask God to make them applicable to your personal life in this new season. Tell God to give you a word of knowledge about your own self. Tell God to give you a word of knowledge concerning your own household. Tell God to give you a word of knowledge concerning 
Whatever you're going to do that day, you're taking the car to the mechanic. Tell God to give you a word of knowledge concerning your car and the mechanic. Praise God. Let those gifts work for your good as you move out. Praise the Lord. It is a new season. When we say we are ascending higher with God, this is part of the ascension. It is not just here we are ascending higher and we are seeing, gifts, we are seeing visions and angels and all that. That's wonderful. That's great. But those who are called according to the purpose of God are called with a greater purpose of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's something much more greater in your life that God wants to accomplish through you and in you. It requires a partnership and walking in faith and partnering with him and surrendering all and saying, God, you are in charge of this. Praise the Lord. So my encouragement to you throughout all this, that God is with you yeah. in this new season. Where there are mountains and obstacles, guess what? Even the mountains are lower. Praise the Lord. Amen. If it's too shallow and you, sh you can't get that deep to scoop it up, guess what? The valleys are lifted up. Praise the Lord. That is the mighty God that you have. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is my encouragement to you today to go out boldly and courageously in this new thing. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I remember when we were moving here, the Lord showed me as we were praying in the old old library that we are in a Joshua moment. There was a Jordan before us and we were crossing the Jordan. Praise the Lord. So we have already crossed the Jordan. Now you are in a new land. Praise the Lord. Be bold and courageous. Guess what? Fear not for I the Lord am going to be with you. Praise the Lord. So in this new season there could be some giants, there could be some obstacles, but it's not your war to fight. It is the Lord's war to fight. Praise the Lord. Vengeance belong to the Lord. Whose army shall you belong? You shall, be, you shall believe the report of the Lord. I would encourage you to make the word of the Lord a life in your life daily. Yes. Speak the word of God. Release the word of God. Tell your tongue to speak the word of God. No. Tell your heart to speak the word of God. Yes. Tell your imagination to switch to the word of God. Hallelujah. The word of God is power. The word of God is life. It is a two-edged sword. There's nothing impossible for the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's so, so interesting when God releases messages that he does that when you're ministering to people. So in this new season, watch the encounters that you'll have with God. They will happen in some unique ways. Capture those, in capture those encounters if you can. But what the Lord showed me last week when I was ministering to a, to a family concerning this message is like in this new season, because it's God who already predestines, God is the Alpha and Omega. He has already seen the last from here. The end of your new season, God has it. He's not like, it's, it's not, you do not catch him unawares. He already knows. So in this process, at 1A, he has already designed a person, a connection, resources associated with 1A. And all you need to do is to step into that stage. God has already gone before you. He's only waiting for us to step into that. If there are connections, they're already there. If there are associations, they're already there. Everything that God has for you in this new season, he is the creator, Matthew. It's already there. Mm -hmm. All he's waiting for us is to step into that. And when you step into that, it's not just a physical step. You step in your spirit. You step in your emotion. You step with your soul. We step with everything that concerns. It's all in. Yeah. You cannot step one hand here and one hand. Look what's happening. I will fall mm -hmm. if I'm divided. It takes holistic stepping in. Praise the Lord into the new thing that God is doing for you. Hallelujah. He has ordained our destinies. He's a faithful God. So be encouraged that God has already gone before you. The summer will soon end and fall will soon step and new things will start shifting. God has already gone before you. Let faith arise within you. Let faith arise within you. Trust that the one who has started it a good thing in you. Yeah. He is the same one yes. who will see you through. Not only will he see you through, but it's the same, same one 
who will bring that new season to a completion and then boom, usher into a new one again. Praise the Lord. This is a season for great things. This is a season that shift has already happened to so many people. The shift has already happened to so many people. My encouragement to you is that in, new, in this new season, God is with you. Step in it with courage. Step in it with faith. Let faith and patience or perseverance work together. Let faith and your actions work together. You prayed enough. It's now time to act. And you act one step at a time. One faith step at a time. Hallelujah. And every time you do that, he waters, he matures, it becomes fruitful, it multiplies. That's the God that you have. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise Jesus. So let's all stand up. Hallelujah. We're going to do a corporate prayer. And you're going to repeat prayers after me. And that's the way I, I feel led that we should do it today. Maybe there's some here today. You know that you're in a new season. And you're just going by. Maybe the last season drained you. Drained you emotionally, drained you physically, drained you financially. And as you're stepping in, it's just too much. You know you are there, but you just you don't have the, the oomph. We are going to pray for a jump start. Hallelujah. When a car needs a oomph, we get it jump started. Praise the Lord. Yes. So we are going to pray for a jump start. Amen. In this new season that you just you receive new energy and new strength for this new season. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So place your hands on your heart and repeat after me. Now pray this prayer. Allow your heart and your brain to hear it. Meaning it's not going to be a soft prayer because you are activating, you are jump starting. Have your cars ever been jump started? The driver goes boom. And it starts. So we are starting this. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For the promise. For the promise. Of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. And of fire. And of fire. Lord. Love. I receive. I receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And I receive. And I receive your fire. Your fire. Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now. Now. I ignite. I ignite my heart. My heart. I ignite. I ignite my spirit. My spirit. I ignite. Ignite. My emotions, my emotions. For, this new season. for this new season. My heart is ignited. My heart is ignited. My mind is ignited. My mind is ignited. My soul be ignited. My soul be ignited. By the fire of the Lord. By the fire of the Lord. I receive power. I receive power. I receive strength. I receive strength. For this new season. For this new season. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next prayer. This is for. This person may be he here now. You're already in a new season, but you are stuck. Things are a little bit fuzzy. You need some direction. You don't know what to do next. So we are going to pray collectively for an awakening. Praise the Lord. An awakening of your senses, spiritual senses, to be able to recognize exactly what God wants you to do. Because normally when you're in a new season, there could be a lot of confusion. It is new. We've never been there before. And you're wondering. You can't sleep. You're constantly, like me, you wanted a prophetic voice. But all it needs is an awakening. Because God does not send you there alone without help. There's always help. The person of the Holy Spirit lives in you. But the, the worry, the anxiety can dim our sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. So we are going to pray for an, an awakening. Praise the Lord. Put your hands on your heart again and say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the spirit of might. Father God, Father God the, power the power of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit awaken my heart, awaken my heart quicken, my spirit, quicken my spirit, awaken my mind, awaken my mind in, the in the name of Jesus. 
receive. I receive. I receive. Wisdom. Wisdom. Revelation. Revelation. Knowledge. Knowledge. Counsel. Counsel. To pursue. To pursue. The things, the things that you have for me have in this me. season. In this season. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember these prayers as you go through this season and the future. You can activate yourself. You can awaken yourself because somebody so powerful lives in you. His name is the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes when I'm tired and I can't even pursue prayer, I start clapping my hands and praying in tongues yeah. just to awaken myself. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. So finally, if you are there already in the new season or you feel that you've not entered the new season I don't want you to feel that you're left out because you're not you may be still in an old season where God still wants you to mature God's processings and timings are different for every person so don't be intimidated by what's going on in somebody's life because it's your timing may not be there yet. Or you have surpassed them and you don't even know that you are. You're still looking at somebody else. So for those people, I pray that you receive great revelation and understanding of what God is doing in you right now. Yes. I pray for revelation and understanding of what God is doing with you right now. I pray that you'll be able to retain what God has taught you so far, and that you'll be able to steward, to guide, to implement, to put in action what God has already told you. Mm -hmm. I renounce and rebuke the fear that has held you back from stepping forward I renounce any hesitation, any hindrance, any fear that has stopped you from activating the prophecies, the dreams, the visions God has already released to you. I break the spirit of timidity right now. And I break the spirit of intimidation right now. And I lose you right now to walk into what God has already shown you in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that you remain on fire and soil, that your soil right now in this current season is fertile. I decree that. I prophesy that. I release fertility to every seed God has planted in you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I release not only fertility, miracle grow, fertilizer was prophesied before. Amen. I command that ground right now to fertilize in the name of Jesus. I command that soil to be tilted in the name of Jesus. I command the fresh soil to come off, to come up and germinate those seeds in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I command right now fruitfulness like never before. The Bible says that the glory shall be greater in the latter times. So I command a latter greater Fruitfulness in this season on your seas in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. The Lord God, every seed, every dream, every vision, every place that you are taking some people right now. Those who are in the past seasons, those who are in the new seasons, and the seasons to come. We declare at this day, 722-2018, at this hour, Lord, that every one of them shall be fruitful and they shall multiply and they shall impact future generations in their family lines first in the name of Jesus. Rakaya Soko Yasenda. Reba Soko Lobosendi Yaba Soko Yoboseki Yaba Soka. Any generational issue, Roko Yasondo Shakaya, that has hindered growth in this family's law, today we break them in the name of Jesus and we lose. Reka Yaba Sondo Yabaseka. Reke Yaba Sondo Shabasoka. On their parental side, mothers or fathers, God, in the name of Jesus, we lose right now. Ray, Koyoko, Sashaka, productivity, henceforth, yes. in the name of Jesus.
name of Jesus, Rabakoya. Senda Rabakoya soka ya sondo koshea. Reba soko lobo sene ya basoto shakaya. Reba sondo iki ya basoto shabaseka. Rondo lobo kosha baseke ya basondo shabosaka ya basea. Rendo lo sheke ya basondo shoboko shabosaka. Brother Ed, if you could stand up. Reke ya basondo shabosoka. Rosheke ya basondo shoboko shabaseka. I speak fruitfulness to your family. Reke ya soko shakaya. Right now in the name of Jesus. Roke ya basondo shabasea. Rosha kaya basoto shabaseka. I speak fruitfulness to your evangelistic call. Roka ya basondo shokaya baseka. That is in this season it will move at a greater level with a much greater impact. Rosha ka shabaseka. That what you've seen, what you've done, rabaka shabasoka, there'll be much greater in this season than never before in the name of Jesus. Zakaya. Ronda rabaseki ya basoto shabasea. Receive new oil, Rabakosha Basoka, a generation. I see new generation oil. Abasoto Koya Soto Shakaya. Rendora Kaya Basoto Shabokosha Baseka. Your age is not a factor, Rabasoto Shakaya, in the presence of God. Roa Rabaka Shabaseka, new generation oil, Rabakoya Soka, to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Lord, we receive new oil, Rabakosha Baseya. As you've given it to, to Ed, Lord, we receive new generational oil, Rabbi Kashwaseya, that our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, yeah. the generations that bears our seed and our names, Rabbi Kashwaseya, shall flow in continuous new generational oil from this day onwards in the name of Jesus, Rabbi Kashwaseya. We release that new generational oil into our homes right now in the name of Jesus, that everything that we touch, in this new season, shall be new generation. Rabba Kosha Basoka, new generation. New generation, Rabba Kosha Baseka, Yabasonda, new generation. So new, new, new generation. Reba Soto Shabakaya, new generation. Rabba Kaya Basondo Shakaya, new generation, new generation. Something new, Rakosha Basoto Shabosea Baseka, a generation. Rabba Kosha, something new is generating right now. Rakoya Soto Kaya. Something new is generating right now. As I'm speaking, I see like plants coming out of the soil and they're bursting out of seeds. And the seeds, you know, the seeds were old and the old shells of the seeds are breaking. New generation. Hallelujah. When something is new, it generates new roots, new leaves. New branches. There's freshness, Rabakoya Basonda, to that which is new. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So we release freshness. And these plants are so green. They are very, very green. So it's green, fertility, growth, life, abundance of it. Hallelujah. Receive that in Jesus' name. We bless you, Lord. We magnify your name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's just stand up and uh, glorify God. Just lift up your voice and praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We magnify your name. Yes. We honor you, God. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your loving kindness, your God, your mighty. We exalt you for every word that you've spoken from the beginning of this service, through the worship, through the prophetic releases, God, through your word, oh God. We step into them, Lord, and we thank you for this new season. We embrace it, we partner with heaven, we partner with your angels. In fact, God, release your angels right now mm -hmm. to minister to everybody, to minister to every home, to minister to every child. The angels of the new season come forth in the name of Jesus, Lord, release the angels of the new season. Come forth in Jesus' name. Release them continuously. Yes. Let ladders of God of you ascending and descending with your angels be in each and everybody's life. In their vehicles, let the ladders be there, be established. In their homes, let the ladders be established, oh God. The Spirit of the Lord, let your wind flow. Let your river flow continuously as you promised in your word in this new season. We glorify your name. We say thank you, Lord. We honor you, God. 
We know it's all about you, Jesus. Let your name be exalted above all else. Lord, we will testify of your goodness concerning this date. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. 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 Amen.